So now we move on to end curses. And configure it. And we're now in position to build it. Okay, so now we can, it says the test suite can only be run off the packages installed. So, it says see the readme file in that directory for further details. So let's install this now. some more fixes here and some documentation um, and there's something there about uh, an earlier version of the NCURSES libraries as if that's required so there's no actual instructions for running the tests here um, which kind of leads me to think that it's probably not advisable okay we haven't got less here um, so I'm not quite sure if I should run these um, there's no indication as to what we can do oh we can try worm I guess Okay, yeah, so that's clearly working. Uh, yeah, Q to quit that. Um, oh yeah, let's try Xmas. Okay, so it looks like that works okay. I'll just press enter there so it seems like any key will abandon any of those tests so yep that looks fine I think it's okay to carry on and move on to said so configure Build it and build some documentation. Test the results by changing the ownership to the tester and running that command. That's all fine, everything's tested that was run. Install the package and install some documentation and that's said complete so ps misc next so just the basic configuration and build instructions A 
and some tests. All looks okay. Install the package. It's done. So get text next. Configure. Okay, let's build that. Okay, well we can test this now. It says it'll take three SBUs. Um, I'm wondering with those parallel uh, processes that have been set up, it might actually be a lot quicker. Yeah, that was pretty quick. Uh, there's probably about one SPU. So let's now install the package. And change the permissions on one particular file and that's done. So move on to Bison now. Configure it. build it and again run some tests it says 5.5 .5 SPUs I'm wondering if it will actually take that long it does look quite fast to me
Okay, again, that was pretty quick. Um, probably about two SBUs, maybe. But we've got all passes of the ones that were tested, so let's install and let's buy some complete. Moving now to grep. So we have a set to put in. Start with the configuration. and build it. Okay, run some tests. So all passed there, let's install it and let's grab done. So now we're on to bash. So we've got some patches to apply. And we can start with the configuration of the build. So build it. And let's now run the tests where we change the ownership to tester. And we put all this text in to start the build. Okay, so it's finished. Um, there didn't seem to be any summary. I didn't notice that there was any errors that occurred. Oh, is there one here? So 
So it says don't consider it a failure if the diff output differing only in the location of the bash binary appears. So that hasn't appeared. Um, visually there it looks like there's no difference there. Um, in the book it does say that the test suite uses diff as it does here. Um, any output prefix with a less than and a greater than, so for example that indicates a test failure unless there's a message saying that difference can be ignored. So I think that's okay to ignore from what I can see there. Um, yeah, it says about run buildings is known to fail on some host distros with a difference on the first line of the output. So we've got that. So there's run built-ins there. There's a difference there. Uh, but other than that, it looks all good. So I think we can carry on with the installation. And run this final command to re-log in and use the new binary that we've just created. So we can move on to libtool now. So configure. Build it. Check the results. Okay, so we've got some failures there, um, but I think they're all accounted for from what I caught. So let's go to the top and just scan down. Quite conveniently, they've been highlighted. So it says we've got five known to fail due to a circular dependency with AutoMake, and additionally with grep 3.8 or newer, two tests will trigger a warning for non posic regular expressions and fail. So we've got one there. There's the five that are probably failing with auto make and we've got this other one here on its own. So all those errors are expected at the moment. So once again, I'm going to rerun libtool after I've installed it. Sorry, rerun the building and testing of libtool after it's been installed and after it's uh, auto make has been installed. So Let's now install this for the time being and remove a useless static library. Tidy up 
and I'll center click this GDBM. So I'll retain the tab in the browser, reminding me that I need to go back to carry on after um, auto make, wasn't it? Yeah, it has been installed. Build that and retest it again. Uh, so GDBM. Build it and run some tests. And make install. And that's done. Next we've got gperf. So again, these are quite simple, these smaller packages, or well, generally they're simpler. And here you can see is an example where it's known that the testing fails with one thread, so it's been for uh, sorry with multiple threads, so it's been forced to one. Um, that looks all okay. Let's install and that's done. Expats next. Uh, that's pasted incorrectly. So build it, run some tests, all good, install it, and it's done. Uh, oh, well, I didn't go to the bottom, so we can install some documentation. And that's done. I net utils. So run this configure command. Build it, run some tests, and that's all passed. Install the package and move one program. And that's done. So, less next. So, if you remember, I tried to run less earlier on, and obviously, because it hadn't been installed, it didn't work, it wasn't found. So now we'll have that functionality after this has been built and installed. So that's configured, build it. Make check. Ran 13 tests with zero errors, so we can install the package. That's done. Now we move on to Perl. So 
This version of Pearl builds compress raw lib and compress raw bzip2 modules by default. Uh, sorry, modules by default. Pearl will use an internal copy of the sources of a build. It should have following commands that Pearl will use the libraries installed on the system. Um, if you want to control how Perl is set up, use remove the DES option from this configure command. Otherwise, the defaults are good enough to use. Okay, that's done. Let's build it. And now let's run the tests. Right, so that took um, probably about a minute, oh, a minute and a half by the looks of it, uh, which is quite reasonable. Certainly not 11 SPUs, but uh, as I said before, they're hard to get accurate. Um, so it's a pass. We can carry on with installing and unset the two environment variables was set earlier on. and tidy up and move on to XML parser. So this file name is in capitals. In case you try to type XML in lowercase and can't seem to get the autocomplete to work or even extract the file if you type it out in full. So run Perl make file dot PL. Build the package, run tests, that's a pass, and install it. And move on to Intel tool. So we do a set fix and configure. Build it. 
test it. All passed and oops, install it and install some documentation with the looks of it. And that's done. Auto conf next. So configure. Make and test it. Okay, that's all okay. We can install that. And that's done. So next to auto make. And we can run this configure command. and build the package. So what we've we got here, this make command. So it looks like it's it looks like it's gonna use the number of cores the system has got if they're above four. Otherwise, it will use four as a minimum, uh, especially based on what this comment says here. Um, in fact, we can copy that bit there and do echo. You can see it's come up with 16. I imagine if you ran that on a system, say two or one core, it will come back with four. Um, like I say, otherwise, anything over a four, it would come back with the number of cores you got available to speed up the tests. Um, it does say replace that function with the number of logical cores you want to use if you don't want to use all of them. So for example, if you're doing some work um, on the system at the same time. So I'll time this. Um, well it says it'll only take 1.6 SPUs, but judging by the previous one, which said half an SPU, which should have been about 15, 20 seconds. Um, I'm sure it'll take a lot longer than that.
Okay, so we've got all passes there, again, of those that have been run, and some skips and some expected failures, but that, that's, that's not a problem. As long as the skip is not excessive, which might indicate a library is missing or something's not quite right, possibly. Um, that all looks good. So let's install this package and tidy up. So before I carry on, I've got to go back to libtool, rebuild it, and just check that we only get two failed tests now, which are due to this newer grep 3.8. So let's extract libtool again. Run the configuration. Build the system, or rather, sorry, build the package. Run, run the tests again. So there's one failure. This is number sixty-six we had before. Okay, so it looks like uh, looks like oh, we did get the other one failing there. Seven five were expected failures. Okay, so that makes sense then. So of the seven that failed, five were expected. So the two that did fail that weren't expected are the two that are mentioned here, and they have come up in red. So seeing one, there's the other one, that number 66. So that's all good. So we can reinstall this package now that we've tested it properly. And again, remove this static library that's been reinstalled and that's libtool done with now.
So I'll shut that tab down. We've done Automake. We'll carry on with OpenSSL next. So run the configuration. Build the package. Okay, that's done. So we'll run the tests now. Okay, that was a pass, so let's now install the package. Oh, that's not worked again. Okay, and some. Uh, I'll change the document directory to be versioned and install some additional documentation with that command, and that's done. Next, we've got kmod. So build the package. And it says something about the test suite requiring raw kernel headers, not sanitized ones, which have uh, been installed earlier, and that's beyond the scope of LFS. So install the package and create sim links for compatibility with module init tools. That was the package that previously handed Linux kernel modules. So that's done. LibElf from Elf Utils. So we extract Elf Utils. And we start by configuring. And building it. And 
recommend running some tests. All OK. And we'll just install what we need, which is libelf. And it looks like remove a static file there as well. And that's done. So next we've got lib ffi. So it says there like GMP lib ffi builds with optimizations and how to get around that if it's important for you to do that. Otherwise we'll just build it as it says in the book. So that's configured. Let's build. All done. And some checks.
and build a package. So first set of tests are meant to be run as root. So we run it like that and that's okay. Now we need to add a group because certain tests require that the testing user is part of that group. And we can run this chone command to change ownership of the files in the directory to tester. And finally run this command to perform the actual tests. Okay, that's all passed. We'll remove this dummy group and install the package and move some files around to comply with FHS. And that's core cool. utils done. So now we need to go back to ACL and recompile it so it can be built against core utils and hopefully the check will give a more favorable result. So ex expand ACL, CD into ACL, run the configuration, build it. Now we can run make check. So we've still got some failures here, three failures. Um, let's do an LD config and rerun. See if that makes it, that hasn't made it different. So it could be that the file system hasn't, or the kernel hasn't got ACL set um, because it's got permissions in the set um, ACL. I'm not sure what the restore is doing, but these indicate that it's trying to do something with uh, the access control list. It could be they're not available in the current system. Um, but apart from that, it, it looks okay. I'd, I'd go along with that. So let's now install the package. And we can consider that complete. In fact, it does say that the ACL test must be run on a file system that supports access control. So it could be they need to be turned on, or as I say, there may be something in the kernel that needs to be switched on uh, to allow that. So I'm going to shut that down. We're back to core utils, which we've done. Move on to check next. So we'll configure check. build it and run the test suite and that's a pass install the package oh sorry that's still going okay so what's going to happen at the end it's going to install straight away so I'm going to have to try and um, so I'll scroll back, I suppose, and see that the tests were indeed a pass.
Okay, so that's suddenly finished. Let's scroll back. Yeah, we've got a pass, so that's okay. And the installation command I typed or pasted in too early has succeeded. So that's all finished. And now we'll move on to diff utils. So this is a basic installation commands that we put in here. Let's build that and run some tests. And that's all passed. Let's install it and that's diff utils done. Move now on to Gork. Sure, some unneeded files are not installed. And run the configure. Build the package. Change ownership of the files to the tester so we can run it as the tester user. And all tests pass, it says remove a file or folder here with the looks of it, a directory, and then run make install. And now we need to create a symlink for the man page to orc and install some documentation. And that's gork done. Now we've got find utils. So configure the package. and build it, run the tests by changing to the tester user and running as the tester. Yep, that's all okay. So we can now install and let's find your tools done. Move on to Groff. So we need to set the page size and as it says there, it's either A4 or letter or it can be written to 
ETC paper size. So in the UK, the standard paper size is A4. So now we build the package. Run some tests. All good. So let's now install. And that's Croft done. Now we move on to Grub. And this is where we need to make a change now because I'm going to be installing for UEFI. As it says, if your system has UEFI support and you wish to boot LFS with UEFI, you can skip this package in LFS and install Grub with UEFI support and its dependencies by following instructions on the BLFS page. So let's center click that. And we've come to this page now. So we're in the Beyond the Linux from Scratch book. And you'll see, apart from the fact there's two downloads, there's also some dependencies that need to be installed. One of them is optional LVM, um, which for the purposes of LFS, I wouldn't bother about. Um, if you come to do BLFS and you do need that, then obviously you'd have to get that installed with its dependencies prior to building Grub. So here we need EFI Boot Manager. I'm going to center click that to bring it up in a tab and free type. Uh, I'm going to go to free type first to see what this needs. Um, so it's got two downloads itself. Um, and we've got several recommendations here. The first is half buzz. Um, after it's installed, install free type. So we've got a circular dependency here. Um, I think I can't remember if. It's necessary to actually build these, but I'm going to do it anyway because they are recommended. So we're going to have to build half buzz, lib, lib PNG, and which. So we'll jump back to which. That hasn't got any dependencies. So let's start by installing these. Now, what I might do is to keep these packages separate from the main um, Linux from scratch packages. So I'll call this um, UEFI and change into that. And we haven't got wget here, I don't think. So what we'll have to do is to go to another tab, become root, change into the MNT LFS sources UEFI directory and we'll have to fetch these packages from here. So there's which we've got to remember to switch back and do the building in this tab. Otherwise we'll be building it on the host system which is not what we want. So now we can extract which change into it and build it with these commands. Now you can chain, these commands are chained together with double M so we can just copy the whole lot in. It's the way it's done in Beyond the Linux and Scratch. There's no test suite, so we'll just run make install. And that's complete. So we can shut that down and remove that directory. Next we've got libpng. There's no dependencies for this one, which is good. So Let's now fetch the package itself. And a recommended patch uh, to include animated PNG functionality if you're going to uh, use libpng with Firefox, CMonkey, and Thunderbird. Well, it's only a patch, so I might as well install it, download it, and install it. Uh, it's only going to take a fraction of a second to. Uh, use that modification. So we'll go back to our LFS build and extract the PNG. Okay, what's it called? Forty two. 
right, okay. So the patch number's got a slightly different version. Uh, the package we're building has got dot 42 and the patch has got dot 40. So let's apply the patch and now build libpng. Now again, I'm not sure if these packages are absolutely necessary, but it's worth doing uh, to ensure we've got a complete build. They're recommended as well, so it's a good idea to build them. So just running the tests at the moment. That's all passed, so now we can install the package with these three commands. And that's done. So that's done, let's shut that down. Now we can install half buzz, so let's fetch it. Now this has got recommended dependencies, but it's going too deep into uh, Beyond Linux from scratch, so I'm definitely not going to install these. Um, I'm not even sure this is absolutely necessary. For, I think free type would have been sufficient. Um, unnecessary to install half buzz and, and the other recommended dependencies but there you go uh, so let's copy this uh, not here we need to do it in the and some scratch tab. So, um, all right, yeah, it does actually say recommended dependencies is not strictly required to build a package. However, you might not get expected results at runtime if you don't install them. So that's worth bearing in mind. So you can see we're running Ninja here, and if you remember, I've set that Ninja jobs. So, um, right, this is complaining that Graphite wasn't found. So what we can do here is to um, look at meson options uh, sorry meson underscore options and look for graphite option so graphite 2 we've oh its default value is disabled so not sure why that's being complained about. All oh, right, okay. There's an option there that's setting it. So let's get rid of that. Uh, okay. It's recreating the build directory. So we just get rid of that and run it from Meson setup without that graphite option. So Ninja Test, not sure if this is going to be very fruitful, being as we've disabled uh, the graphite and there's lots of other features not available, but we'll run it anyway. And as I said before, I think you could probably get away with not installing these free type dependencies. Um, I can't quite remember how I've done this in the past, but I'm pretty sure I've not bothered thinking about it now. So all it means is that the Linux from scratch build is going to be a little bit bigger. Yeah, in fact, this is not building. So I think I'm just going to ignore this and just build free type. So let's fetch 
these packages. So there's free type. So extract the additional documentation that we've also downloaded and install free type or compile it rather with these commands. Oh, uh, is that failed? Is it? Yep, this is mouse. Uh, let's start again. Okay, so let's do that again. So extract the documentation. Paste these commands in to build it. There's no test suite, so we install it and then install the additional documentation. And that's free type done. Okay, now we need EFIVR and POPs as dependencies of EFI Boot Manager. So let's fetch this one. Extract it. And build it with these commands here. We can run make check. And that's a pass, so we'll install it. And that's all we need to do. So that's popped completed. Now EFIVR, recommended mandoc. So let's fetch that. So we build it and test it. Okay, that looks like a pass. And we'll install it with these two commands, and that's mandoc done. Here, five R then. So let's download this. Extract it. Uh, it does say here that package cannot function properly on a 32-bit system with a 64-bit UFI implementation. And as it says, it is a very rare situation if that is the case. So let's build it and install it. It says the test suite is dangerous. It may trigger firmware bugs and may even render your system unusable without some special hardware to reprogram the firmware. So I'd be warned. So that's EF5R done. Back to EF5 Boot Manager. We've got the dependencies installed for that now. Let's wget that package. Extract it. And 
and build it and install it and that's done so we can get back to grub we've got the dependencies of grub installed so let's now extract go back to the source directory extract grub and run these commands as the root user all oh, right did we not oh no okay we haven't installed uh, downloaded this uh, unicode font here so let's fetch that oh. link that's better okay so that's in the UEFI directory but it's expecting to be in the same directory as grub is so we're going to have to let's start from the beginning again just be on the safe side extract grub change into the directory now it says to create this directory, this should already exist now, that should be successful, but we'll run it again. Now this g unzip command, if we copy this all in, we'll have to modify the path to the file that we just downloaded, the unifont, because it's actually in the UEFI directory there, so that should be complete. And yes, that's worked. Again, if you've got any um, environment variables set, uh, unset them. In fact, I'll run this. I know I haven't got anything set, but I'll run it anyway. Grub just will not run if you've got any of them set. I've only ever had Grub run once or twice a very long time ago with those set. Um, but it's liable to cause problems um, if it did run. Add a, missing, add a file missing from the release tarball. Uh, if you're running a 32-bit LFS, prepare a 64-bit compiler. We don't need to do that. Uh, we're on a 64-bit machine. And build grub with the following commands. Okay, that's all done. And there's a test suite, but it didn't provide any meaningful results. So we'll just install Grub. And to using Grub to make the LFS system boot for the UFI platform, we discussed in using Grub to set up the boot process of the UFI, which is the next section. Um, okay, so this is something we'll need to do when we build the kernel. Yeah, we'll need to look at that when we build the kernel. So I'm going to leave that parked there, return to this page. I don't think there's anything we need to do here because it's all about, um, did we do the... Bash completions, was that there? Yes, it is. Um, this is all about installing Grub on a non UEFI system. So, when we come to this section 10, use, using Grub to set up the boot process, that's when we need to go back to the BLFS book. So, let's now tidy up Grub 
and move on to gzip configure the package build it run some tests and install it they've all passed So now we move on to IP root. And we've got a couple of commands here. And we compile the package with that command. There's not a working test suite, so we'll just install the package and then there's some documentation as well I always believe it's good to have documentation to hand and that's IP root done kbd next so we've got a patch to put in Remove some redundant uh, or a redundant program. And prepare it for configuration. Build it, run some tests, and they're all successful. Install the package, and finally, we've got some documentation to build as well. So it's KBD done. Now we've got lib pipeline. Figure equals user. Make that's built, run some tests, all passed, and install the package. That's the pipeline. Now we go on to building make. So configure build it. Run some tests.
Okay, that's all passed. So now we can install the package and let's make it done. We want to patch. Prepare it for compilation. Build package, run some tests, that's all passed, and install the package, and that's done. Now we've got tar to do. So we start by configuring for the build. Okay, let's now build a package and run some tests. Okay, that binary store restore is on the screen at the moment, the failure there, so that's expected. Yeah, one failed unexpectedly, but as I say in the book, it says it's expected anyway. So we can install the package and put this documentation in as well. And that's tar finished. Next, we've got tax info. We can run the configure. and build it and now I can run some checks all look good install and install some optional components Oops. And it's done. Um, it says sometimes there are occasional problems with make files of very various packages you can rebuild. Um, this info documentation system uh, with these commands. So text info is done. Move on to Vim. So change location of the configuration file, configure Vim. Now we'll build it. A 
that's all completed we're going to test it so we'll change the ownership of the files to tester and then run the test as user tester and you'll see that the output is being redirected to a log file so we're not going to get anything put up on the screen while this runs we'll just have to wait for it to complete Okay, so that has tested. What we need to do now is to um, use grep um, to look for the words all done in that log file, vim-test.log, 
and there it is there it's found it so that shows that the it was a successful test as it says in the text in the book so we can now use make install to install vim and some commands here to modify the way we start vim um, most people use via to start vim And there's another sim link to correct or alter the way the documentation can be accessed as well. There's a configuration file we can put in here for Vim. Global file. And there's ways of finding out extra options here. An example there as well, the looks of it. So that's Vim done. Markup safe. So it begins with capital M. And we install this with two pip commands. One to build it. And one to install it. And now we move on to ginger. Again, capital J. And once again, it's a pip command to build this and to install it. And now we move on to system D. So this is a bit that I could get lost with, but hopefully I won't because I'll be following the instructions. Um, as I don't normally use a system D. So I remove two unneeded groups from the default UDEV rules with that set command. And now fix the security vulnerability in the DNS sec verica verification of system D resolve D and a bug breaking running system D analyze verify on an instantiated system D unit. So it's a patch file to fix those. Prepare the system for compilation. And uh, to be quite honest, this is one of the reasons why I don't use system D because it seems to be excessively over the top to achieve something that System V or System 5 can do in a much smaller package. Um, and arguments about it can start the machine quicker. Well, yeah, if you're worried about saving a few seconds, I'm, I'm not convinced by that argument myself. Uh, but that's just my personal view. So that's in, uh, configured. Now we can pile it with Ninja. Okay, that's built. We install the package and install some man pages. Create an etc machine ID file needed by system D journal D. And set up the basic target structure. Okay, so it looks like all we need to do for that. So system D done. Now you move on to Dbus. Now I'm not sure if this is now part of LFS or if it's a requirement of system D. Normally this gets built in beyond Linux from scratch, but 
um, we're building it here now. So let's configure this. Oh yes, it is for system D. It says there. So build that. Run some tests. That's all successful. Install the package and finish off with a, a sim link. And that's done. On to MANDB. B. So we configure this package. So let's build it. Run some tests. That's all passed and we can install the package. And there's some information there about installing for non-English languages. So that's MANDB. Next we've got PROC PSNG. So configure it, compile the package and run some tests. It says one test name PS with output flag BS time etc is known to fail if host comes not build with that option. So I didn't see any errors, no there's no errors at all. Um, so that's obviously not a problem. Let's install the package and that's complete. And we can move on to Util Linux. First, we disable a problematic test with this set command, and then we can run. The configure to prepare the build. And now we can build the package with make. Okay, now, so if desired, run the test suite as a non-root user. And there's a warning here, running the test suite as a root user can be harmful to your system. To run it, the config, SCSI, debug, etc. So we're not going to be doing that because that would entail modifying the kernel, rebuilding the kernel, which we haven't got yet. So we're going to change the ownership of the files to tester and then run the test as tester. All tests passed, so we can install. It does say if you've got certain um, options in the kernel not enabled that some tests may fail. Uh, that didn't happen in this case, so we've installed that package. Let's tidy up Util Linux and move on to E2FS progs.
make a separate build directory, change into it, and run the configuration command. So build it with make. some tests it does say one test is known to fail so it doesn't necessarily mean it will fail but if it does it's not a problem so yes we did get that failure um, M assume storage pre zeroed uh, not sure if we can see that in See, there it is there. Oops. That line there. So it just says it's known to fail with no reason why. So let's remove some useless static libraries. And it says installs a GZIP info file doesn't update the system wide DIR file. So let's put these commands in to fix that. Unzip this file. Oh, didn't I do the install? No. Let's do the install next. Now I'll remove the static libraries. Now we can do this gunzip command and run this install info command. And if desired, create and install some additional documentation. And that's all done. Um, configuring E2FS progs contains the default value of various command line options. You may edit the file to make the default values suitable for your need. For example, some utilities that aren't in LFS or BLFS cannot recognize an EXT4 file system with metadata to see some seed feature enabled. If you need such a utility, you may remove the feature from default EXT feature list with the command. So that's probably not recommended to do that command um, from what that bit of text is saying there. So that's E2FS progs done. Move on to debugging symbols. It's talking here about uh, the amount of space that debugging symbols take up in uh, programs and how much space could be saved. And we could do this by uh, stripping and it says it's optional it's intended if the intended user is not a programmer and does not plan on doing any debugging in the system software the system size can be decreased by some two gig by removing the debugging symbols um, it says it easy it is easy to make a mistake and render the system unusable um, so it says it does recommend it's a good idea to back up the LFS system in its current state um, I must admit, I've had some problems, but it's probably something I've been doing incorrectly. Um, so let's just check, see what else it says here. So it's explaining how it's uh, doing certain things to avoid problems. And if there's any package whose version is different from the version specified in this book, it may be necessary to update the library file name and save user lib or online user lib. Failing to do so may render the system completely unusable. Well, because I've installed extra packages from BLFS, I'm not actually going to run this stripping. Um, in case, from what that last bit there, in case that's not catered for, um, and I'm not sure, I've never tried this myself to modify this, so I'm not going to do any stripping this time. I normally would do to save a bit of space, um, but I think that's going to fail. As I say, I've installed extra packages from BLFS, 
and it's likely that it will fail or, or um, you know cause problems with the build that we've just done so I'm just going to do these commands to tidy up uh, other files these won't make much of a difference they're just tidying them up for various other reasons um, remove this compiler that's been installed for chapter 6 and 7 it's not needed anymore and delete the test the user so that's nearly all the compiling done all we've got to do next is to move on to system configuration uh, and then compile the kernel finish uh, using grub to set up the boot process and that should be it done so I'll be doing that in the next video